and welcome to Aviation Deep Dive. This video is sponsored by Icarus Art. Finnish forces during the Second World War have gone down in history due to their plucky determination against the Soviet threat, and perhaps more specifically for their interesting use and modification of aircraft. From the Mirko Morane, a French MS-406 heavily modified to improve performance, or the B-239s, Brewster Buffaloes that at the hands of Finnish pilots performed better than virtually anywhere else in the world. Not having a huge wealth of materials or aircraft, the Finns had to make very good use of what they had, which also of course included pressing captured enemy aircraft back into service and using them against their former owners. This is what we'll be covering in today's video, a deep dive into the captured aircraft used by the Finnish Air Force throughout the war. As there are quite a lot, and I have a pretty large amount of information to get through, courtesy of my helpful Finnish aviation expert, Anna Jenne, this series will be split into multiple parts, this episode focusing on the DB-3 and IL-4. The Ilyushun DB-3 was a mid-1930s Soviet bomber design, having undergone its maiden flight in the summer of 1935 and entering service with the Soviet Air Force shortly thereafter. It, along the Tupolev SB, would be two of the most common bombers during the early years of the war with the Finns, and over the duration of the Winter War, the Finns would actually end up taking stock of five of the aircraft that had made forced landings on Finnish soil. Somewhat humorously, the aircraft were originally repainted and given the code VP, for Vicholis Bomitaya, or Enemy Bomber in Finnish, although they would be later changed to a simple DB code. The first DB-3, given the code VP-101, was captured fully intact near Khaukho after a forced landing due to running out of fuel. Given to Squadron 36 on the 29th of February 1940, the aircraft would be shuffled around a bit before ending up with Squadron 46. This aircraft would enter service with the Finns almost a year before the second captured DB-3 did. But throughout 1941, from February to June, Four more DB-3s, repainted and repaired, entered service with Squadron 46. A fifth, marked VP-13, had also been captured, but had been sent to Germany in May, who wanted to get their hands on as many Soviet aircraft as possible for extensive evaluations before Operation Barbarossa. Squadron 46, with four DB-3s in their inventory at this point, would use the aircraft as bomber trainers in the intermediary period between the Winter and Continuation War, as well as giving some significant modifications to the aircraft. In partnership with the channel, Icarus Art is a company that makes beautiful, exclusive aviation artwork, printed on canvas prints and posters. Whether you're into Catalinas, Corsairs, Stukas, or Spitfires, there's sure to be an artwork for your favorite aircraft. And if not, they're constantly adding new designs and art pieces to their shop. Their posters also feature the same artwork and start from just $10. If you're after something nice to hang on your wall, and you're an aviation enthusiast, I'd highly recommend checking them out. Use code DEEPDIVE at checkout to get a discount. The batteries were switched to more reliable finish models, the right wing had two landing lights installed, the rear gunner received armour protection, and an improved compass and radio equipment were installed. Perhaps the biggest modifications, however, was the removal of the three leading edge wing fuel tanks, and the upgrade from the Tumansky M87 14-cylinder radials to the improved M88 which upped the power output from 950 horsepower to 1100 horsepower. You might be wondering how Finland managed to secure the newer improved M88 radials from a country they were at war with. In April 1942, engineer major Vaino Kinanen was supposed to order 17 M87 radials from the Reich Air Ministry, but under his own initiative ordered 40 of the much better M88s, quipping in a letter back from Finland, so I'll probably be hanged after arriving home as I made the deal without permission. The crews who flew the DB3s with an extra 300 horsepower probably appreciated his initiative, however. 
It's worth noting that these upgrades were done on a case-by-case -case basis and weren't necessarily standardized across all models or aircraft, so there was a fair amount of variance between them. The ideal aircraft with the M88 radials, better batteries, removed fuel tanks, would be a pretty significantly better performing aircraft than the standard DB3 of the time, having more power and being lighter. The vast majority of Soviet DB3s had the inferior M87 engines. By the time the continuation war broke out in June 1941, Squadron 46 was split into two flights. The first made up of three Bristol Blenheims, and the second with four DB3s. The outbreak of the war brought about extra responsibilities for the squadron, which had up until that point been using the aircraft as bomber trainers. The squadron would now begin reconnaissance missions and begin preparations to carry out bombing missions in the Aunus Isthmus and the Gulf of Finland. Just five days into the war, on the 30th of June, the Finns would lose their first DB-3, though not to enemy fire. VP-11, whilst landing, suffered a fire that started on board. The aircraft crashed into a pond nearby, with all crew members surviving. Three days later, on the 2nd of July, another Finnish DB-3 was cruising at an altitude of 7.5 kilometers, or about 25,000 feet, when one of the engines failed, and the aircraft went into a spin. The mechanic and pilot went down with the aircraft, whilst the two other crew members managed to bail out. Unfortunately, one drowned, but the other survived. As such, Squadron 46 was left with only two DB-3s, and when Squadron 46 was reformed back into a training unit on the 15th of July, it gave away its final Blenheim on hand, leaving just the two former Soviet bombers. These would be supplemented by five captured DB-3Ms purchased from Germany, as well as the one DB-3 initially sent to Germany by the Finns for evaluation. Upon arrival, however, it was determined that all of these aircraft had to go for lengthy repairs and maintenance before they could be put back into service. In November, Squadron 46 was created, a new training unit, and all the aircraft from 46 were moved to 48, though by this point keeping the DB-3s airworthy had become quite a task. Spare parts were hard to come by, though the situation was improved somewhat by the purchasing of spare parts from Germany. Throughout early 1942, the DB-3s of Squadron 48 began gearing up again, all the aircraft becoming operational by March, and the squadron beginning transformation into an active bombing squadron once again throughout April and May. However, the DB-3s continued to be lost in accidents. On the 19th of August during a night flight, DB-12, in what was presumably a low-level exercise, struck some trees. The resulting crash killed all three men on board. Just a couple weeks later, on the 31st of August, the Finnish DB-3s would see their first operational bombing use as part of a combined raid of 22 aircraft from Regiment 4 on a Soviet airfield. In the action, none of the aircraft were lost, despite being followed by a Soviet P-40. On the following bombing raid in mid-September, the Finns would not get off so lightly. DB-18, possibly overloaded, couldn't get off the runway in time and struck the bearing station at the end of the airfield, killing the crew, bearing station commander, and destroying the aircraft completely. To supplement these losses, four further DB-3Fs, which were actually redesignated as IL-4s, were purchased from Germany, though one of the four aircraft crashed en route. Overall, 1942 would be a fairly quiet year for the Finnish DB-3s, only being used in two bombing missions, though two of them, and an IL-4, had been lost in accidents. The IL-4 was essentially a significantly improved variant of the DB-3. It featured an extensive redesign of the wing structure and nose, reducing drag whilst also fitting the more powerful 1100 horsepower M88 radials. The beginning of 1943, with four operational DB-3Ms on strength, would get off to a pretty in intense start, when the DB-3s were en route to a bombing mission when a snowstorm began to set in from the east. A Finnish PE-2, which had spotted the storm on a reconnaissance mission, desperately tried to contact the DB-3s by radio and tell them to turn back, but the efforts were fruitless. 
Two of the DB3s reach their destination, dropping their payload, before turning back and becoming lost in the storm. One of the aircraft, disorientated in the storm, smashed into the ice of Lake Pielinen, killing all on board. The other three aircraft were miraculously able to pull off emergency landings, saving the crews, though the aircraft were damaged as a result. Throughout the rest of 1943, the DB-3s and IL-4s continued to be used on bombing operations with some success, often in pairs and almost always unescorted. In November, the aircraft were once again shuffled around, moved from Squadron 48 to 46. In their time in Squadron 46, the DB-3s had conducted 27 operational sorties and the IL-4s only three. In early 1944, on the 18th of May, three IL-4s would take part on a bombing raid on Mergino Air Base, along with six Dorniers, in what would be the largest Finnish bombing attack ever up to that point. On the 9th of June, at the mass offensive of Soviet forces at the Karelian Isthmus, Finnish lines broke down and Regiment 4 was ordered to attack the Soviet ground troops without regard for own losses. In the ensuing engagements, the aircraft would be pressed into heavy bombardment on the Soviet ground troops. On the 13th of June, an assortment of seven Blenheims, two IL-4s and two DB-3s attacked a detachment of troops, reporting Omitettiin kello 12.07-12.16 korkeudesta 1600-2500 metriä. Pommit 44 kertaa 100 kiloa ja 12 kertaa 12 ja puoli kiloa. Osa osumista tiellä, muita ei havaittu pilveenmenon vuoksi. Hävittäjä hyökkäsi DB- ja DF-partioiden kimppuun. Hävittäjä häipyi koneiden vedettyä pilveen. On the 20th of June, the Soviets continued making ground, pushing forward and overtaking Finnish terrain towards a natural narrow-necked funnel in the landscape. In the push, Finnish DB-3s and IL-4s continued their bombing attacks on the Soviet troops, the offensive finally grinding to a halt after two weeks of intense fighting. Just ten days later, the record for the biggest Finnish bombing force ever was broken when 40 bombers, including a group of DB-3s, bombed a Soviet convoy, observing significant damage. By the time the continuation war was over in September 1944, the Finnish bombers had seen a fair amount of action against their former owners, but their job wasn't over yet, as the Lapland War, as Finnish troops expelled Germans from the country, kicked off. Winter was setting in, so missions for the aircraft became more sparse. The Air Force was also beginning to shrink as older types were taken out of service, and the captured bombers were an obvious first choice to begin being struck from service. The first DB-3 to suffer this fate was DB-19, flying for the last time on the 28th of February. On the 22nd of March 1945, the captured bombers, or maybe bomber would be more correct, saw its final mission, where one DB-3 and one Dornier bombed a German barracks. Throughout the remainder of 1945, the DB-3s were steadily lost and decommissioned, the last in service, DB-13, flying for the last time on November 1st, 1945, and being removed from service the same day. At the end of the war, the DB-3s and IL-4s had logged 2,425 hours of flight time with their Finnish crews. After being put through extensive upgrades and improvements, the former Soviet bombers had become serious assets to the handy and very materially efficient Finnish Air Force. Kept flying well into an era in which the bombers were undoubtedly outdated, the DB-3s, and to a lesser extent the IL-4s, had made up a not insubstantial part of Finland's bombing force throughout the war, and in a twist of fate not only used against the country that had built them, but later also used against the country that had sold them to the Finns. A huge thanks to my patrons on screen now for supporting the channel, and thank you so much for watching this video of Aviation Deep Dive. Consider liking and subscribing for more weekly content, and please also consider supporting us on Patreon. See you in the skies.